All these things, because I was wondering why I didn't get that one from last I time. I want to share this. To me. Mm -hmm. Like, why am I not getting it? So I found I don't know how to a link to what this is. Not on the agenda. Sorry. Yep. Um, main goal of the agenda is to um, do two things, actually three things. First, um, Gerilyn submitted a resignation letter um, on uh, April 21st for an effective last day of May 3rd. And then um, on April 29th, or I'm sorry, that's today, I'm sorry. Um, I don't have the date, do I? I just want to make sure I have the, the, the true dates here. Um, on April 22nd, hold on a second, back up. Um, April 25th, the original resignation letter was submitted. A Withdraw to the resignation was with contingencies was submitted um, I am I am so sorry I'm mixed up I'm not on the right dates April 18th the original letter was sent on yeah, April 19th for the background. Oh, wait, April 18th. Yeah, you're April right. 18th. You're right. The original letter was sent. And then. April 22nd. Was the contingency? It was when she uh, withdrew. Yeah. Okay. It was on April 22nd. April. Yeah, but I need the. I need the so she submitted a withdrawal of resignation with contingencies. That'd be on April 22nd, right? No. No. A withdrawal of the resignation was submitted on April 21st, it says. On April 21st. Mm -hmm. No, that's not right. That was on your analysis of that. I, I, I can find it here. I'm so sorry. Yeah. April 21st, yes. Sir. 
I just want to make sure I have the right dates in here because there have been a lot of dates. <laughs> okay. Yeah. On the 21st, um, was the. Okay. So. So on the 18th, we received the original letter of resignation. And then on the 21st, we received another notice from Geraldine saying that um, she was willing to withdraw the resignation with some contingencies. And um, both myself and Jim Richards um, had lengthy discussions with Geraldine about um, some of the changes that were, we already had kind of in place that we were working towards to um, take some of the burden off of the city clerk, but that it's neither I, uh, neither our um, single voices that can make the decisions to accept the withdrawal of the resignation with all of the contingencies that she had um, asked for, and that even if we could accept the, the withdrawal with the contingencies, we couldn't promise that any of those things would be done quickly. Um, and so I, I, we kind of talked about the things that she was looking for. Um, and, you know, we knew that this was gonna take a council meeting to determine, can we do those things? Um, and then following those conversations, um, she did submit again, um, another written letter of resignation on the 22nd um, and said that based on the conversations that she had with Jim and I, um, understanding that we were not able to approve the contingencies, um, she felt it was best to resign. So the council as a whole, we need to decide, number one, if there is any type of negotiation that we would like to do in regards to the contingencies that she submitted, or if we feel that we can't promise those contingencies and that we accept the resignation. Um, so I guess I wanna leave the floor open for some discussion if, um, if I could hear other people's thoughts. We need to tell them what the contingencies were. Mike, do you think that it's appropriate to outline the contingencies? Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's fine. They're in the memo too, but so you don't really have to. But oh, okay. everybody read the memo. But if you want to, you can. The one thing you shouldn't do, and I should have said this at the beginning, is you can't discuss employee performance. Mm -hmm. That would have to be in a closed session. But that's not the purpose of the meeting today. No. The purpose okay. of the meeting is not to do a performance evaluation. Mm -hmm. So right. Um, yeah. Um, so I I can share the the um, requests. Um, first was removal of the administrator and financial advisor duties from the city clerk job description. The second was to reduce her schedule to 36 hours per week. The third was an increase in hourly wage. The fourth was hire additional city staff persons. Um, and that is the, the kind of basics of the list that she had mentioned to us. <clears throat> Thoughts from the group. So I guess we're we're, we're open. asking the yeah the rest of the council. I think number one, um, does the council want to ex, uh, accept her contingencies and work with her? Or do we want to accept the resignation as it stands? Right, I don't correct. Think you're not going to accept the resignation. The real, the real decision is: Do you want to um, entertain the contingencies and, okay. and direct the personnel committee to, you know, attempt to negotiate on those contingencies at all? And if you decide that you vote that down, then you don't have to accept the resignation. Then the personnel committee is already authorized to send a notice, notice accepting the resignation. Okay, and, so. and, and I'm I'm the new person that there is on the block with all this stuff. Um, I know going back, I think to January was when you made uh, an exception to turn around and have two hours travel time 
difference for her to be able to go and to move where she was to go back and forth with her kids, which I, I thought was really generous to be able to do that and allow her to be able to work from home, you know, to try to do that. So, you know, I think that we offered a pretty good olive branch at that time, trying to be workable with her of what was going on. Um, when I, I see these other things that, that come into play here, and I know that the workload is increased, especially with what we've got going on right now with um, the water and sewer project. And so, and, and I think that there's other things that might have been thrown on her plate that weren't necessarily right, but yet I think that, that we've been pretty open, but she accepted the position to, to be the financial person and the head clerk when she took the job two years ago. Um, asking now to remove those things from her um, and, and again, cut her hours um, are, are, you know, to me, I think that we've been generous up to this point that, that you know, um, my question would be if, if it continues on this path, what would be the next request that goes along with it? <clears throat> yeah, I agree with Jim. I think we've really, the personnel committee um, has gone out, out of their way to make it um, feasible for her to, to accommodate her kids' schedules and, and things like that, um, working from home, um, you know, equipment at home, um, you know, asking us, the one thing that really catches me is asking us to increase her wage, but decrease her hours. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't seem quite right. I, and I completely agree that their workload has increased because of the water and sewer project. Um, and we have hired extra staff to assist. Um, and I, as, as we grow, I can, I assume we will continue to do that. But at, at this point right now, I feel like we're in a better spot with staff than we have been in a long time, um, as far as number of staff. And um, yeah, I agree. I just, I think we've done, I think the personnel committee has done a great job in making sure our staff gets what they need to work the best they can. And, and adding to that too, um, we just got the computer program for Michelle like a week ago, wasn't it a week and a half ago? And that would have helped reduce the workload because she couldn't do anything on the computer till she got the program. And, and this was all done before you had a chance to see what it was really like. And the workload kind of flattened out with, with Michelle being in there. That. Yeah, that's a really good point because the computer software got installed that Wednesday <laughs> um, that she resigned on, on Monday. So that's a very good point. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, that I guess my issue with all of it, and, and I, I have talked with her as well, I think a lot of us have. Um, my issue with it is, is kind of to what Dana is saying as well. You know, some of the issues that, that we're seeing that, that uh, she has stated are all about too much work, not enough time. But in the same token, I'm seeing the request for less hours, more pay, different title. Um, and I, I will say, from a personnel committee and from a city council, I think we have been working with her. Um, I understand there's frustrations. Um, water and sewer has added a lot. Um, and we didn't say we wouldn't, wouldn't work with that, um, but the resignation came in. So we have to deal with that. That's the thing that we have to deal with. Um, and I, I don't feel from a city council perspective, this is my personal opinion, that we take contingencies because it, it, we are, if we do, we're setting a precedence for the other city employees 
where if they don't like something or they think they're overworked or want to change, they can resign and say, okay, I'm going to rescind it based on these conditions and you have to meet them. Um, I don't want to set that precedence. And I, and I agree with, with what you're saying with that. You know, the other thing too is, is um, she's very much aware of, of what it takes to go through city council to do different things and um, almost being demanding that it be done right away, knowing that it takes time to go through just regular process that there is that's involved. You know, that um, um, it, it's just, it's, it's time. I mean, it's not a, a regular business. It's, it's a city and it's run differently as you, you go through to, to get the proper approvals. Right. And the personnel committee can't on their own make these major decisions to make things change. If everything comes through the council, we're messengers to the council as a personnel committee. And the council makes those decisions. So to put these conditions, which we is can't just, yeah, the conditions are fine. She has every right to do that, right. but the answer couldn't come today. Like that quick. It couldn't and come then, before that. Day. And there was a lot of progress that was done too. Um, we listened to some of her um, comments that there were with with trying to to work a little bit differently with the mayor. Mm -hmm. And, and that type of stuff that was going on and those had been addressed. So issues had been addressed on a regular ongoing basis this year to try to make things more workable, you know, for, for that environment. Yeah. yeah, and I think, and, and I, I've said this probably to the group and to Gerilyn, um, I, I don't ever want to be held hostage by an employee or feel that an employee is being held hostage by us. Mm -hmm. That if you are unhappy in your position and you want to leave, that is just fine. And if, <clears throat> you know, it, it goes both ways. And I, I have known Geraldine for a very long time and I hold no regard to her decision. If she wanted to resign, that's okay. Um, sometimes it's just not the right fit and mm -hmm. that's okay. Um, will it be difficult for us to, you know, move forward with a short notice of just, you know, a few days here left after today? Yes. Um, you know, if we, if we decide to go that route, it will be difficult, but I also feel like we need to make the decision that's right for the community and not put ourselves in a situation where, again, we set that precedence and say, okay, everyone, if you want to get paid more and do less work, resign and then withdraw right. and we'll make it happen for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't, I think too. that's, that's a major point that there yeah. is, you know, and, and I don't want that precedent to, to, to be set here in Orinoco. Right. It'll, it'll, it'll bite us for years to come. Yeah. And I guess my, my other viewpoint on this is, you know, there's there's good in everything. I I I'm going to look at this. Do I do I want Gerilyn to leave? No, I don't. Do I want the city to be put in this position? I don't. But Gerilyn resigned. Yeah. We didn't fire. So I'm looking at this as an opportunity. Uh, and I appreciate she brought things to light that that need to change. And I think we take those things in consideration and we're going to hit the reset button is the way I'm looking at it. So I think I think we're kind of all on the same page. Well, and, and the thing that, that there is, too, that I look at, um, going over everything that's transpired. If she came back, would she be happy or would there be a resentment part that could have fit in that same thing that that's a part of it and um, having that environment is not a positive thing for the city, you know, and, and happy employees work much better. So I, I guess with the majority of our comments, um, the 
kind of leaning towards not accepting um, the request for continued employment with the contingencies. Um, it looks like from the legal standpoint, we need to pass a motion um, to deny the request for continued right. employment. Yep. And then, then you can move on to kind of discussing, after you do that, discussing um, kind of how you move forward and what you think you want to do to try and fill the position. I'll make a motion to deny the request for continued employment with contingency. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Um, so the next steps um, are really where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. um, her last day will be on Tuesday. Um, <coughs> one of the things that the lawyers recommended was that we hire an interim um, administrator um, if this was the, the decision that the council made. Um, the conversation about an interim person is that we could hire someone that would just be here temporarily um, and that would kind of help us get on track and understand the rules and, and things that we really um, need for the city. Um, the other piece that I have been kind of, it, you know, brainstorming in my head is, are there things that we can hire um, for, hire out that instead of having city staff do some of these things, we could hire them done. One of them being payroll, mm -hmm. um, my former, um, the company that I owned, we hired out all of the payroll, and that was a, a very simple task that we can give to someone else. Um, things like bill pay, payroll, um, it, I'm sure there's probably a, a bigger list of items that we can look at, but what things can we pull off of the plate here um, while we move forward and try to, try to figure out what we want to do with the, the position? And then um, it, what things need to be done every single day, what things can be put on hold or do we need to ask for extensions for? Um, you know, I think there's, because we are basically all volunteers and we're not here every day, we don't know um, what the job 100% entails and what the position really means. Um, what are we doing on it on a daily basis that we can't live without and what can we kind of put on hold? Um, the other thing that Jim and I had talked about is um, as the personnel committee coming in on Monday afternoon and doing a strategy session with Michelle and um, Renee to talk to them about what things they can take on, what things that they've been trained on um, but obviously we need permission from council to, you know, what do you want us to work on type of, of scenario? I mean, if I'd like to ask a question too, um, what's the attitude of the rest of the staff right now in the office? I think it depends on the day. <laughs> I think I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm speak, asking. Yeah, I'm like, I think if I can speak from what I, what I understand, um, they're worried and they don't know what's going on. And because we haven't been able to meet until today, none of us have known what's going on. And so a feeling of uncertainty is probably the question that's going through their mind. What's the plan? How do we make this work? Who's gonna do all of this work? Is it gonna all fall on my shoulders or someone else's shoulders? How are we gonna, how are we gonna do this? Are we gonna get paid? Um, and you might wanna mention what what we told them that well, the expectation is we let them know the expectation is not that they pick up all the slack because they have their jobs as well. And the administrative assistant being new was in the, in the honeymoon stage or the, the training stage and not a lot of training had happened due to heavy workload as I'm understanding. So now we have to look at and start shifting that, but we did assure them that we are not expecting you guys 
to pick up everything that Geraldine did. Because I know that there was, um, again, I think prior to my time too, or just the beginning of my time, um, hearing that there was a stress factor that was going on inside there. Um, and so that's where I want to try to, again, if we have uh, happy people that there are, it makes a big difference on how they approach things and for them to come to work every day, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that. So um, don't want them to feel overly stressed, I guess is what I'm trying to look at. Um, and I think to, you know, having someone come in in the interim that has had a lot of experience with this, you know, based on, on uh, what's her name? Brooke, Brooke said, you know, there, there's people that have a lot of experience that can come in during, you know, for an interim, interim process, uh, time and help us through that gap until we get somebody. And I think that's where I see there's opportunity because that person could look at this and say, you know what, based on my experience, I think this is the way you should do things, or maybe these things are falling through the cracks, or you know, I just think there's opportunity. I well, think and and, and I'm I'm with you on, on the opportunity. I, I think that I'm looking we're we're coming into May. Uh, from what my training has taught me is we're coming into a little bit of the budget system to get started on budgeting. Um, we've got a lot of things that are right now needing to be done with the water and sewer, especially with the amount of money that you're playing around with. Um, how do we find somebody that, that can temporarily come in right away that understands the rules of, of city government, okay, to be able to do this and handle it straight ahead? And I don't know how we came out with the audit. Is the audit finished or so the audit's not done either so there's a lot of things that are in play yeah. yeah so with um what the lawyer brooke had mentioned is that a lot of cities in this situation will do, go with this interim person and they are generally people with you know 20 30 years in um city government and they'll come in and they have the expertise they can they can jump into the position this is what they do um, she was going to send me contact information. Um, and then I think um, Nico also said that he would send some information to us about how, you know, how to find someone like this. Yeah, and I think you posted generally, there's options. You can post it at the League of Minnesota Cities. They have a job board, just like I'm just looking yeah, at it. That would, yeah. Looking at it right now, there's what we claim you had the same thing happen three years ago, and they hired a a long time Wabasha city administrator who had retired, uh, but still lived in the area. And he came on for three to six months, maybe. I mean, I don't remember exactly, but he, David Schmitz's his name. He did a very good job. And so I'm still in touch with him. I can give you his name. And I think he lives part-time in Wisconsin and part-time, but Western Wisconsin, kind of by Winona. And then he, he has a place in Wabasha too, so. You know, he'd be an option that I know, but you could just reach out to him and ask if he's even interested. He might, he might say no to that. And then, <laughs> but that's the only person I know, but it did work out. I would just say that when they got that interim person, I mean, that he came in, they sold the municipal liquor store, transferred their liquor license, um, rewrote a giant section of their code. I mean, we did a bunch of stuff in those three or four months he was there. Mm -hmm. And so it, I think that is, at least you should look into it. I mean, I'm not saying you have, I mean, you don't have to, you could have nobody will work at City Hall, but I think you could <laughs> at least look into that. And then and then I think you should just work with, he's the only personal, I mean, I, I wouldn't even call it a recommendation, just he's around and he did it a couple of years ago, two and a half years ago. So maybe he's still around, I don't know. Um, but then you could get, work with Nico and Brooke. I think you could just make a motion to have the personnel committee work with Nico and Brooke on forming a job description. Um, and taking any necessary steps they see to get something posted for an interim. Well, I think administrator we're, or clerk or whatever. Yeah. I think that um, it's probably going to cost us a little bit of money in, in this process of going through. But I think it's also important that looking for the full time person starts right away as well, so that the interim person 
can be working on training the, the full-time person or, or something, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know if that's the way that they recommend to do it. Okay. I think they recommend to, if we can get an interim person in, we get, get them in and then we rely on their expertise to understand what we are okay. looking for for the full-time person. Is that? I, think that's, I, I mean, I think I would defer to them, but I think okay. that's the gist of it. And okay. but it's not like you wait a long time, right? right? I mean, because <laughs> I want to have the transition yeah. from right from yeah. this to be a smooth transition without having another gap. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, but there would be like I mean, when David did it, he didn't work full time because he has like a farm, like a hobby farm out in the rural sticks. His wife's a doctor, and so they have a place near Eau Claire where she's a doctor, and then a place in Wabasha where they're from. But um, but he did. I think he had a schedule and he came in, he had Fridays off and then he, but then he worked remotely too and it worked out fine. Um, but they were, I mean, it takes, a, the, the problem with it is, you know, you don't have an administrator position. This is speaking a little out of turn. I talked to Brooke about this in your code, you have a clerk position. No, right. So that's a decision that has to be made, but that's going to take steps to do that. So really you should focus on an interim because it's going to take some time right. to even make those decisions as to what you want to do. Right. Can, you know, can there is a clerk or an administrator or what, or what you're going to do. Yeah. And can, there's changes that might need to be made in, you right. know, job descriptions and all. Well, of I know we can't things. change the city part without going up for a vote to be able to change yeah. that whole thing for that's, that. So that's, 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 that's a major. Yeah. Um, yeah. But is there an opportunity for us to post right away for this being a full time position that's available? Maybe. There might be somebody that's out there ready to jump in that we don't know about too. Is that possible? The post for the permanent position? Yeah. Just they're to see what I think they're not recommending or they're recommending not doing that. However, when's your next meeting? It's like 20 days from now. Mm -hmm. I think what I would, I mean, if that's what you want to do, just a just a thought. I just, you know, maybe there's that's what I'm saying. I mean, we don't and know. The nice thing is if we can get an uh, interim person in here, they can help us with posting for right. the, the real, the full-time position. Okay. They can help us with the interview. They can help us with... I was going to tell you, that's a lot of work. To yeah. do any of this yeah. is a lot of work. Yeah. And the yeah. job description itself, I think yeah. that we need to... I would like this person... Jan, if you're going to talk, can you go in the hallway, please? Thank you. I would like to make sure we just have our ducks in a row before we jump into that full-time person. And I just, well, I really like the idea of an interim person who has a lot of experience and who's maybe even done this before, mm -hmm. because I think there's a lot of restructuring that we would benefit from as a, as a city, especially as we're growing. And I think that somebody with that, um, with that history and with that knowledge would be, I think they could bring a lot of ideas and a lot of. Well, if you don't have an interim person, how are you actually going to do this? Then you've got no staff person basically, because. Right. Well, Renee right. Renee's yes. full at work. I mean, Correct. she's got some work. So, you know, you're going to hire us to do it or hire a consulting firm to do it. You might as well just get, get an interim administrator that can do other things too. Right. So that's, I think we recommend, yeah. Brooke recommended that. And I agree with, I mean, really, it's up to you, but I think it's going to buy us time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know how you're, you're going to facilitate things without and somebody. I, and I think that that in itself, I mean, the amount of hours that Jim and I have mm. been working for the last two weeks for um, for on behalf of the personnel committee, um, I, it can't continue. I mean, it's it's been appropriate, and we're not doing things, you know, out outside of what we should be doing for personnel, but I, we can't, the two of us can't or the four of four or five of us can't do this work. This is above and beyond the scope of what we should be doing. And I don't want to get into another situation where city council mayor needs to come in and do payroll mm -hmm. or do work that the city clerk would have done mm -hmm. unless we vote on it and that person is a paid employee of the city because I, it's there's so much to do and 
I don't have, I, I just, no. we can't. We have a full-time job. <laughs> so with that, my, my question would be, number one, do we, so do we vote then on bringing an interim person in? And then do we also have to we gotta make have a motion, a, have a motion for, for an interim, um, right? the money to well, make that happen? No, or? I think no. I think okay. the motion would be to direct the personnel committee to work with Flaherty and Hood to take any necessary steps deemed appropriate by the committee to um, hire an interim city administrator, and you could say including, but not limited to posting uh, job postings. You know, so that's I guess the question. I mean, do you want to just empower them to do that, or do you want to have another special meeting? after they get the, the job description of the interim person to come back. I mean, maybe you just wanna authorize that right now to just get that posted, um, get that posted and, and authorize the committee to do any necessary steps with Flaherty and Hood to get, um, to work toward getting an interim administrator. Obviously they can't, you know, it might require another special meeting, I don't know, but they can't hire anybody and they can't, um, you, know, you don't have to post a job with compensation specifically like this because it's really going to depend. It's really going to depend on how much the interim usually implies. Sometimes it's full time, but with David Tata was like 60% time. And that's what he would do it for. You know? And so that's why they did it. So, or David Todd, David Schmidt, David Todd's the current city administrator in my view. But um, yeah, so I would just do a general motion directing them. And then, you know, the next meeting's in about 20 days. And then they'll have, this, this will be an agenda item. and. And it's possible after you talk to, because depending on what you decide to do, the committee decides is the best path. It might require a special meeting, it might not. But I think just directing them to work with the law firm to post if possible, or take steps toward posting an interim administrator role um, would be acceptable. And then you could read, and then also to reach out to individual candidates. You don't have to, this is professional services. So you don't have to bid it or anything. Okay. I mean, it, there might be other people I can ask around and see if people know somebody else. You can just, just do that too. Does anyone want to make the motion? I'll make a motion to direct the personnel committee to collaborate with labor attorneys to work toward hiring interim city administrator, including posting a job notice. Job um, advertising. An interim an advertisement for the advertisements for an administrator. I think she recommended, she even listed like jobs.com and just like the normal websites. If you don't have to yeah. put them on the lead, there's, there's multiple. And we can have city staff do those job postings. I think you're making this motion to move forward with that without, I, I don't think you can hire somebody without bringing it back to council. Right. We're just right. making that, that the motion have... basically would say the way it says it is we're, directing the personnel to committee to collaborate with the labor attorneys to work toward hiring the interim city administrator, which includes posting a job advertisement. Yeah. Okay. And then they will advise if it needs to go back to council. They know right. all those Just like any other, the back of their any hand. other. They'll just tell you, you can't do this. Until and then city staff can actually do those job postings. Like Jim and I aren't gonna post the right. jobs. Is that correct? Just or like any other. We, the way that just, it's worded, I just wanna make sure. <laughs> So who's actually going to physically do the posting? Oh, okay. I, I didn't think of that. Um, I don't have to. I can. I can. I can amend my small little thing. I can amend my motion to just say motion to direct the personnel committee to collaborate with labor attorneys to work toward hiring an interim city administrator. Yeah, and then we can do. Is there a second? Yeah, that's that's a second. second. Jim, Jim, Jim. Big one. All right, all in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, another thing too, if we need to have a special meeting between now and then, especially if you're looking at 20 days out or whatever it is, I like to, I'm open to be able to do that because I think this is important for us to get this moving ahead and not let it sit too long. Yeah. You know, so our next meeting is 18 days from now. We have another meeting, I think, before that, don't we? With Sita? No, I don't think so. I don't know. Um, the other the other pieces um, of information that I would like to talk about are um, things like uh, paychecks, um, 
I would also like to look into the contracts if there are contracts with with CETA, with um, Joe, with um, Stantec to understand what they can take mm -hmm. off of the plate of the city staff that their staff can actually do. So, and then with, with CETA, what can we move over to them? We're already, we've already said and have budget for um, CETA. So, um, right. and I'd like to also understand, you know, from the contracts, are, are there things, um, you know, because they're talking about Santec, you know, we've, we've heard repeatedly about Santec having city staff do things. I would like us to review the contract and make sure that there's not things that are being put on city staff that we're paying for. And, and just to do that due diligence, you know, to, to put that at ease. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so then also understand from that, what they can do that we can hand over. Um, so, yeah, definitely. So with CETA, from my understanding, we're not, we haven't as a council decided yet what they're going to do because we've only had the one meeting. So okay. we have two more meetings before we would. That's just for the EDA. Oh, true. But we, okay. We hire, we've, we've scheduled and budgeted for a CETA Right. Staff person to come in Thank and you. work on things. It's like one day a week, isn't it, or something? And they have yeah. they have a space to work, but we haven't brought them in. So, um, I I think what I would look for from the council is approval to um, have our city staff work with CETA to come up with a task list of things that they can do. Uh, we're already spending the money on it, and then. Um, same thing with Joe. So did they come in now? Do they come one day a week now? No. They haven't started. They haven't started yet. Okay. It did, but it's coming yeah, soon it's coming. with what's going on. I just don't think that anybody has given them anything to do yet. Oh, well, that's... So, okay. um, and then we did have um, Renee start looking into um, companies that would do um, payroll for us. Um, that we could hire, and Wilson, Tibber, and Maves was the only company that had sent a um, what is this called? An estimate. An estimate. An yep. estimate. Um, a quote. Thank you. It's not an estimate. It is an estimate. Yep. Um, an estimate for ten employees, um, and it would cost us one thousand five hundred and fifteen dollars plus some additional um, minimal fees for an entire year for 10 employees to do payroll. Um, I, I don't know if we need to entertain other, other estimates. You don't have to, um, but I, I think, you know, I, I think the discussion about the duties, I, I mean, you, this is a special meeting, so you have to limit what you're doing to what's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And it says status of the city clerk employment and duties. And you're kind of discussing what were formerly, soon to be formerly Gerilyn's duties. Right which is fine, but I don't think we can make motions to approve contracts and stuff like that. But maybe, you know, it's just a discussion. You don't need to right. vote. I mean, maybe it can be brought to the next council agenda. You know, if it, they just did an estimate, can they do a proposal? Can they say, or send a contract and bring it to the next meeting? And, and I guess that's my question for the group is, is this something that you want the city staff to continue looking at so that we can bring it back? Because Payroll is something that we cannot. Seems pretty miss. affordable. That's like, <laughs> no, I think that's a great. That's like one hundred and thirty dollars a month. Yeah, I think yeah. giving them, especially <laughs> now, giving them, um, letting them know that we would we welcome this. We welcome them to their feedback on what they think we can do in this time period, and to have that ready for us by the next. Well, your personnel meeting, but then for for the entire council to discuss at the next meeting. I think that that's well. And when's the, when's the payroll go out next? I mean, that, you got to. That's gotta, my issue is it. that we have payroll that's going to be due every two weeks, and we're going to miss it if we. Um, can we <laughs> can we fold this into the personnel committee to make this? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about is the discussion is about the duties, the employee and her duties. So we're talking about that's one of her duties. So I right. think you can just. Um, 
if you can just direct you know the personnel committee to work with existing staff and and um, you know just work it out between now and the next meeting and the person you can just empower the personnel committee to handle that particular task immediately right. by any means including hiring a consultant um, maybe put a cap on that i mean up to a few hundred dollars to hire a consultant or you know i don't know how else you're going to do it this is the problem when you only have two city staff people in one quest i mean right and the other well do. the other one or, or could we do it with you know in that recommendation to, to do the 1500 or 15 whatever it is and, and cap at that point and then that way it's open to be able to move ahead with what you want with the payroll and yeah, get it. Right. I'm worried that our staff are not going to get paid if we No, that, I, I'm, right. I, I think that that's a good way and, to do it. And to your point, that I was just going to say, if if we could put it that the, the personnel committee can make a decision up to a certain dollar amount yeah. to make that happen, because the thing I worry about is, so let, let's take, for instance, that company that gave us that estimate, um, and we say, hey, can you do it? And they say, well, not unless we have an annual or a year long contract. Right. So we still have the problem that we have to have. No, I get it. Well, you, do you guys have the authority to do it, which is, yeah. I, I think, or, or to take any means necessary to do it, which might be calling them, would you just give us a contract for this week? Right. Just to come in and do it this week. Yeah. And then maybe you can spend a few, the council wants to approve. You know, this meeting's about employee and duties. I think that's a duty. So okay. I think you could just approve them to spend a few hundred dollars to make sure that payroll gets out this week or what next week, whatever it is. Because okay. I think there were four bids um, or estimates that she had asked for, and this was just the one that had come in before today. So I, I think whatever, you know, as a group, mm -hmm. we just need to make sure that staff. Oh, yeah, because I mean, they've, they've got to get paid. I mean, that you want to have mutiny, that would be. Right. Yeah. Have a meeting. yeah. Well, and also you probably are gonna you I think Nico and Brooke will probably require a special meeting to take any action. So this is if you could get those quotes organized yeah. without delay, you could bring that put that on that in a week or 10 days, you can put it on a special meeting and address it at that point. But you're gonna need to get, I mean, I don't know what form those is, I've not seen them, but you need to get either a concrete like written proposal or a contract, even better, a contract to put in the packet, like seated it. They gave us a contract and they put it in the packet. Yeah. And I reviewed it, I remember. Um, so that's that That would be the best, or, or something that's more than just an estimate of the expense of what it would take. Like it's clear and unclear to me if that's like a proposal. It's or, a proposal. Okay. Yeah, it's a proposal. Um, okay, so do I have a motion? <laughs> well, I wrote, I wrote something again. I can make a motion to direct personnel committee to work with existing staff to handle payroll by any means, including hiring an outside consultant. Yeah. Uh, for services, to, do we need to put a, a cap on that one? Or? Yeah, for services between now and the next council meeting. I should just say that without a cap. I mean, I think you're all trusting it's not going to be a million dollars. They're not going to spend a million dollars on it. And it looks like in this proposal, additional work is based on time for set between seventy and ninety dollars an hour. So I would assume that that's their their hourly rate. Standard. So if we don't hire them, so I have a little bit of an issue with that, only because what does that do until our next council meeting when we have payroll again? You know what I mean? Well, and we they, won't have anybody hired yet. Can we go until? Can we say until we have? Sure. Have hired a staff sure but I, I would staff. just say that they have to bring it back at the next meeting to have a I, I think right. that that's yeah. it. Dana I think that's good with what you're you're trying to get at yeah I, I think you're on the right path on, on that I, I reword it just reword the motion and say until there's an interim city administrator so um, hired. yeah but then, that, but it's understood this will go on the next council agenda anyway and now the council will reaffirm right but, but if they don't but at least it's right. in there to be yes. able to move ahead because otherwise you're right. We'll be cut yes. in a pay period coming without having anybody. Because I do want them to be able to, all we're really doing is making sure the personnel committee has the ability to do, yeah, to exactly. do that work. Okay, this so is all going to get readdressed. Re say your motion and then we'll get us still out. typing. <laughs> um, all right. 
I'll make a motion to direct personnel committee to work with existing staff to handle payroll by any means, including hiring an outside consultant for services between now and the hiring of the interim administrator, city administrator. I second that. Or further action by the council. Or further action. And then really run on sentence. I don't like those. And Jim Phillips seconded the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Is there anything else that you would like to discuss tonight? Or is there anything Mike thinks we should? talk about tonight. I think you just you've taken the next step to direct you the personnel committee to work on getting an interim administrator and you know and if Brooke or Nico think that you need another special meeting to take an important action you just have to be available for a special meeting right. to, to do that. Okay, okay. and you've already got the contracts too that you guys are going to be working on with Santec and everything else which is part of your committee right so there's no motion needed for that. Mm. We don't need motions for that. No. You're, you're already under. You already yeah. signed the contracts, so they exist. But and just an FYI, you know, we did ask for task lists from all three of what they do currently, so we have somewhat of an understanding. And the great thing is, we're losing one, we're not losing all at the same time. So Renee has a good idea on on what things what things are happening and when um i mean there's there's things she isn't necessarily going to know because she has her own line of of work but uh we're not we're not walking dark in the dark um so we've got that task list and at least we can start to go off that but i will say there there may be things that come up like payroll things that we have to do right away but we don't know what we don't know yet I think you hit that. I think payroll is the most important. Yes. And I think anything else with, um, you know, Stantec, I'm sure there's things that are going to come up, but I'm, I'm sure that Joe and Renee, Joe can work with Renee to make those things go through. And I think the other pieces that she, Sherilyn, has been working on that do have deadlines, um, I know she's been working on them um, and doing her best job to complete things before she leaves. Um, I mean, she's still a city employee. She's she's here until Tuesday, and she she's putting the time and energy into it. So uh, I don't want to take away from from that. We just need to figure out the things that have deadlines um, that we can't extend, and that we need to keep the city moving. So, all right. Thank you. To the, I would just like to say thanks to the personnel committee for all your hard work the last two weeks, and before that as well. It's, I know that that's not an easy. Uh, so thank you. I'm grateful. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. It's 524. Let your weekend begin. <laughs> <laughs> Not what we all wanted to be doing on a Friday night, but we had to get it done. This is important. Okay, so now what I can do is.